Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another live stream fishing show. Uh, we're going to be talking all about near shore and offshore fishing, tips, tricks, and more. We're going to be giving away free trips, and we've got a lot more lined up for you tonight. We've got Captain Frank in the studio tonight with us, and uh, you ready for a good show, Frank? I'm back, baby. We're ready to do this. <laughs> All right, we're going to get this thing started on Facebook. What's going on, Facebook? Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. It is Sunday night, November 3rd at 8.29 p.m. We are live for another Sunday night live stream show. We're going to be talking all about near shore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. We're going to be talking about the weather giving you lots of insider information. And uh, tonight we got Captain Frank back in the studio. What's up, man? I'm here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thought you were going another way with that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a great show lined up for you tonight. Got some cool photos. Got some discounted product to give away. And uh, some free fishing trips, as always. So sit back, relax. Remember, in order to win those free trips, you do have to be watching live. So make sure you stay tuned with us, guys, because if you want free fishing trips, you got to be watching live. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about our new systems here at Hubbard's Marina, talking about all the cool new tricks we got uh, up our sleeve and uh, lots, good, lots of other good information tonight. Plus, we're going to be answering your questions and more so hopefully you're ready for a good show remember to comment where you're watching from don't forget to tell your friends to tune into the show and uh they might win a free trip they might win a free trip who knows remember we uh we are going to give away a half price 39 hour fishing trip but if we got 300 live viewers you are going to get a free 39 hour fishing trip so Definitely a great idea to sit back, relax, and get ready for the show. We're going to get started here very shortly. We just need to do a few things before we get rolling. And uh, we're going to let a few more people join in here. Don't forget to comment uh, where you're watching from. And uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends on your Facebook page or your favorite fishing club. And on YouTube, don't forget to like the video, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel, please. In order to win those free trips, a lot of you guys ask about that from time to time, so I want to make sure everybody knows how to win those free fishing trips. In order to win free trips, you do have to be watching the, uh, you could watch on YouTube or watch on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. But in order to win the free trip, you do have to be watching the show live and you do have to have commented on the show at least one time from the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. So go to Facebook.com, type in Hubbard's Marina, find our logo, and once there, you'll find the live video. Comment one time and then you can watch from YouTube, you can watch however you want to watch the show but you do have to comment at least one time from the hubbard's marina facebook page in order to be eligible to win was that was that clear frank that, i think you got it all i right. think you got it all covered i don't know i mean sometimes people still are a little confused so i want to make sure we do the best we can to give everybody a shot at winning some free fishing trips because what's better than free fishing trips um Someone to pay you to go out fishing. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I win. <laughs> yeah, we got a great show lined up, guys. We're going to be talking about those hogfish that Captain Frank has been catching and lots of other captains around Hubbard's Marina. Did you hear about Bobby's trip recently? I did. He had a great trip. Man. Um, he got a, a nice mess of hogfish. So I heard it was like 20. Um, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, I wasn't there, but yeah. uh, I heard that they had a they had a great trip uh, last Sunday. Yeah, and uh, a lot of mangrove snapper too. Yeah, we've been pounding those things, man. That's been awesome seeing those, uh, and the numbers we're seeing again. Yeah, those mangrove sure. snapper, man. 
and, and it's, the gags. We got to talk about the gag. Oh yeah. Today too. Don't don't forget about the gags. I won't. I won't. <laughs> All right, I think we are just about ready to get this thing up and rolling. So, you guys ready? You ready, Frank? I'm ready. All right, we're ready. Let's get this thing already. going. How are y'all doing tonight? Thanks for tuning in. We're already up to 230 live viewers. So, we've only got 70 more to go. And someone's getting a free 39 hour. Free overnighter. Free overnighter. And uh, hopefully... You guys are ready for a great show. We're going to be uh, showing you some photos to start out and uh, talking about what we've been catching. And then we're going to get into uh, a little bit about the weather. I think this week we need to definitely talk about the weather and how to schedule your trip around that weather. Yeah, I thought we were pretty good till next weekend, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty good till this coming weekend. But definitely, I always like this time of year to kind of emphasize how important it is to time oh, the, your trip oh, for this around time the weather, of year, for you sure, know, for sure. Because I mean, that weather makes a big effect yeah. on the ability for us to produce a good quality trip. Yeah, and if you can be flexible with your days, that's you know awesome. Because one that's day it could be super crappy, the next day is totally awesome, or the day before, you know. Yeah, um, it's always the day before. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been, yeah, here, you yesterday. been here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a crappy day, we wouldn't have told you about yesterday. But, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely important to time your trip around the weather. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the weather as well. But let's get into this thing and show you some of these fish, what we've been catching. We are going to start inshore, show you what they've been catching around John's Pass uh, inshore, from shore. These are fish that you could catch, even not on our trip, just coming down to John's Pass and visiting us, or while you're on vacation taking a few trips with us and you're not on the boat all the time, you can catch some of these guys from shore. So we'll get into it now. Nice big snook. Yeah, it's a nice snook. Yeah, they've been catching a lot of snook lately uh, around the pass. And it's kind of late in the year for so many snook to be around the dock still. You're they're, seeing them in the morning. They're loaded. They're yeah. loaded. Hundreds. It's crazy Hundreds. how many snook are still around the dock. We, de we haven't had that real big cold snap yet. So I think that's yeah. what's keeping these snook on the beaches and in the pass. Uh, so in such high concentrations, uh, they're going to be moving into those back bay waters here anytime now as that water gets colder. But right now, seeing them a lot inside the pass at night is definitely the best time to get them. But we're catching a few in the early morning and then around dusk as well, as you can see from this photo. And then the flounder, the flounder is starting to heat up, man. Yeah. It's almost that time of year. Yeah. The flounders are around. They're, right now, they're kind of up in Tampa Bay, around the uh, back bay waters, especially in the sandy patches of the grass or right along the seawall. Uh, flounder like that soft, sandy bottom. Yeah, they're such a cool fish. I love flounder fishing. Yeah, it's so unique yeah. in how their eyes are on both sides of the the, or how their eyes are on the same side of the fish yeah and how they migrate over is nuts. yeah i grew up fishing up in uh, chesapeake bay and that was we could have targeted any you know stripers or, or uh, bluefish or or anything but flounder was always our number one we, really? yeah we didn't every once in a while we'd go out and, and do the striper thing but we loved the backwater flounder fishing because it is way crazy cool up there because they're big i mean they're, and they're yeah. like you can catch a, just a ton of them i mean i've had days here where we Caught 18, 20 flounders over at, uh, by Mary Pierre. What's that? Uh, Blind Pass? Pass a Grill. Or Pass a Grill, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, Pass a Grill it used to be a hot spot for them there at that Mary Pierre. I don't know if they. Blind's they, Pass is still too. Is that right? Yeah, because Blind's Pass. That's where I got Pass, my biggest yeah. flounder in Florida. Yeah, the Blind's Pass, you have that big, big grass or a uh, big, big sandbar that you can reach by foot. You can reach on foot. Oh, you yeah. can wade fish it, or you could drift over it in your boat. And uh, that's some of my biggest flounder. But that little that little grass flat uh, inside Passa Grill, just uh, east of Mary Pier on that same side. Yeah. That's where I caught some big flounder yeah. in there, too. Some big trout. Um, but flounder are great fun, and they're going to get better and better as that water cools down. And we even catch a few offshore uh, yeah, on those half-day trips. Yeah, we got one uh, the other day. It was... Uh... 23 24 inches it's a monster yeah. it's a big flounder it's a great flounder yeah they're good eating too and hard to fillet yeah well i i've got a i got a thing for it. i know how to uh, fillet. you got a yep, thing yep, for that i do you I, got a guy I, for that i got a, i know a guy who knows how to clean a fish <laughs> would you uh, believe it 
And then the redfish, the redfish bite's still going really well. There was a ton of redfish around the bridge today. These guys yeah. showed up for the half day trip, and unfortunately, we had to cancel it. But they had driven down from like Jacksonville or something yeah. to go on a half day fishing trip. So they wanted to go fishing. Right. So I was like, hey, man, they, the bite's been pretty good under the bridge. Yeah. Go over there, check it out. They caught like a dozen redfish nice. That's, on the I mean, rental how, how rods. How much better could that be? You know, yeah. you drive all the way down and, and don't have, you know, at least you got to do some fishing and, and had a decent day, you know? Yeah, they, they caught a lot of redfish under that north side of John's Pass, uh, under the bridge yeah. in that sandy area. The redfish were all up underneath there uh, towards the end of today. I don't know what the tide was doing off the top of my head, but it was around 4 yeah. o'clock. Five o'clock inside John's Pass. You can look up what the tide was doing. Yeah. But those redfish are definitely starting to move back into the back bay with those snook as those waters cool. But there's a lot of them around. Still some redfish yeah. near shore. This is one of those big breeder redfish oh, yeah. that was off the beaches. They're going to be fewer and further between. We're going to really stop seeing those big schools of redfish off the beach. But there's still a few of them out there, and you can get lucky finding those big bull Dylan, reds. I got to stop you. We got to give a shout out real quick to to sea bass. Oh, sea I bass forgot about that. Is about to have his baby. <laughs> um, if you're watching, which you better not be, but if you <laughs> hopefully are, you're not you, watching. Yeah, hopefully, you're not watching this show right now, sea bass. <laughs> but if for those of you that do do know sea bass, it is uh, one of our valued mates at uh, at Hubbard's Marina. Um, he is uh, they're. He's about he's it's about to happen. He's almost a daddy. What made you think of that? <coughs> what? What made you think of that? The fish? It was Did a that just you see something shiny? No, no, no. I just you know, I, <laughs> just and I gotta give a shout out to my daughter Kylie, which I think is gonna be on the next show. I talked to Dylan already. Yep. I know you're watching. Uh, I think you might be on the next show, so that might be an exciting, fun show for her. At least, at least a little guest appearance for her. Yeah, if you guys haven't met Kylie, she goes fishing with Frank. And uh, she's a bad to the bone little uh, deckhand, yeah. first mate. Uh, she can unhook fish. What she's eleven years old. Yeah, she's been doing that since she was probably five or six. Yeah, working the deck with a, uh, a pair of pliers and holding, you know, a fish on each finger, and you know, and slinging another one off with a. <laughs> it's. She's eleven yeah. years old, little blonde, cute little girl, and she can w walk up and down the deck and unhook fish. Faster than some grown men. That Faster than sea bass. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's at uh, yeah. Sea bass is having a baby right now. Okay, yeah, I him. know. Well, that, I don't think he's watching. That's why we can oh, say that. Oh, okay, okay. So we're clear. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, all right, back to these right, redfish. <laughs> but yeah, big shout out to sea bass and his wife Ashley. Congratulations. Nice trout. The trout are definitely going to be getting better and better, bigger and bigger, easier to catch. Right now they're on those deeper grass flats, um, but they're going to be getting bigger and easier to catch into those shallower waters in those pothole areas as the waters cool down. This is coming into a great time of year for trout fishing in our area. Those are speckled sea trout. They love those grass flats inside John's Pass. You can actually hop on those kayaks we have right there behind the pass or right there behind our office on the beach take those kayaks for an hour or two hour rental we have the rods in the shop or you can bring your own and there's some killer little islands inside john's pass that hold tons of big trout this time of year and even occasionally some of these cobia i know recently a guy inside john's pass caught a monster cobia this yeah, right. guy came from near shore this wasn't from around john's pass but definitely a lot of cobia in the bay area uh inside the bay around tampa bay around the mouth of tampa bay and along our beaches too yeah i think that's a that that one uh still has a prominent white stripe on there like a, a it was a real juvenile. dark yeah yeah it looks almost it has the coloration of a juvenile right, cobia right. yeah it's a, but nice it's a cobia, big though. cobia yeah, for sure yeah that's captain chris wiggins to the right uh he has a I think it's Salty Hook Charters or something similar, but it's Captain Chris Wiggins. He catches a lot of big fish and uh, sends some of those photos in for our for our uh, Fox 13 show. So shout out to Captain Chris Wiggins cool, for yeah. sharing Great that. Great fish. Beautiful fish. And there's a lot of cobia around near shore. Those crab traps that hold those triple tail. Mm -hmm. We got a ton of triple tail on those crab traps, but often you'll see cobia. And that's kind of what a lot of these guys are doing near shore mm -hmm. is cobia fishing 
or catching cobia while they're triple tail fishing. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled. Cool. I haven't I haven't seen one on a crab pot yet. I've seen triple tails always. Everything that you yeah know, that floats out there. But uh, I caught a big cobia off um, Reddington Long Pier when I was like 14, 15 years old. I was cruising the crab traps for mm-hmm. those triple tail you saw and them? was cruising pretty fast. And uh, what I thought was a log, I swerved to miss and it just shot down under the water. Huh. We were in like six foot of water and it made a dust cloud. That's how big this cobia wow. was. It was a monster. Never hooked him, but I chased him a lot. It's <laughs> a great story, Dylan. <laughs> it was a great, no pictures or <laughs> right. it didn't happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a beautiful fish and you see them a lot along the beaches this time of year. But that guy right there, that is a true, that's a hero's tail right there. Yeah. That's a monster, huh? That's a nice That's a nice lane snapper for sure. Monster lane snapper. They don't get much bigger than that. Yeah, we, we, got a, we had a freak half day last week where we got two or three of them that were, you know, I would say in the, you know, 18 inch range. It was, they, it was just, I don't even know where they came from. We, we caught eight of them on, on one stop. And for those of you guys that come out, on the half days with us will know that if we see one smaller lane snapper a week, you know, they just don't come into that 35 to 45 feet of water no. uh, very often at all. But uh, uh, we had a one stop where uh, we blasted, I think, like eight lane snappers, six keeper mangoes. Uh, we even got a mutton snapper, which was like, what the heck was he doing here? On a and, half day trip? Uh, this is on a half day. That's and crazy. Uh, we boated like six gags. Wow. On the half day. And uh, I did get a keeper myself, too. It was delicious. <laughs> um, I gave him away, though, of course. <laughs> he was uh, delicious. It, yeah. Somebody, but you gave well, him away. Well, somebody told me it was delicious. Oh, right. okay. Um, <laughs> he so, could feel my yeah, eyes. <laughs> black and, black and, yeah. Uh, but I lost a couple others, too. They were definitely, man, yeah. those gags are just moving in. I can't wait to talk about that but I'll let you oh know. we're getting there we're getting yeah there. It's, it's one of those next photos that's oh, it right boom. there sal yeah sal had a half day trip on the hub so it was a five hour half day they were fishing right around that 40 to about 70 foot range mm-hmm. and uh, the gags started firing in a matter of an hour from 9 a.m to 10 a.m they caught like a half a dozen that's nice awesome. keeper gags now this was the biggest one these are shallow water fish that are just moving in so these aren't going to be huge monster trophy size gags but this is a 30 a, this know. is a five hour yeah. half day fishing trip right uh, granted it was a private charter but yeah. to see those gags bite so well so quickly is impressive and it's only going to get better yeah for sure for sure this is like the first year honestly that i that i can remember in the last eight years maybe seven to eight years where you're finding those gags i mean yeah you can you always got a few spots where they're, they're always hanging, mm-hmm. but you know, at, at the the point where we're taking the boat around from spot to spot to spot, it's really, really hard for, uh, you know, it has been very, very hard for us to, uh, to even target a gag grouper. Yeah. Um, with those, with the big boats, the little boats, Sal's been, uh, he, he got a few of them the other day too. He's been doing really, really well on them. Uh, if you guys do want to do a private charter, uh, Sal has definitely got, uh, got him zeroed in. Uh, he's doing real well with them. Yeah, Captain Sal, uh, one of my first, like, really good gag grouper trips was with him when I was, like, maybe 10, 12, 10 11 years old. I mean, he was one of the first captains yeah, I no, ever Yeah, yeah, he was, he was a captain for uh, I was one of his mates. Uh, I would I would fill in for him uh, when I, back when I was a deckhand on the, uh, the overnighter. Yeah. Uh, I would fill in from time to time with Sal. And um, so, yeah, I've known Sal for, for quite some time, too, now. So I He's guess, a fishy fool. Yeah. It's yeah, good to have glad, him back. Glad to have you back, Sal, if you're watching. <laughs> I, I think I saw him join somewhere. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I thought so, but I, I may have missed You know that. what I did see is we're over 300 live viewers. Boom. So someone's getting a free overnight fishing trip. We got 250, 245 on Facebook and 66 on YouTube. So oh, sweet. So someone is winning a free 39-hour trip. Someone else is winning a free 10-hour trip for two people. Someone's winning a five-hour half day for two people. But what? You got to be watching live. You got, and you got to. You got to pay attention. You got to say something. Yeah, you got to comment. You got to comment. You got to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page at least one time. So if you're watching on YouTube, 
hop over to Facebook for at least one comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page to be eligible to win. You can watch on YouTube all you want, but you do have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook channel. So you got to go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook, find that live video, comment once. Basically, it puts your name in a generator. If you're not yeah. in the generator, you can't be generated. <laughs> got to be in it to win it. You got to be in it to win it. Just like what they say about the jackpot. Yeah. So here's another nice gag grouper from that trip the other day with Captain Sal. Definitely some gags moving in. Oh, yeah. So gags are moving in. Hogfish bites going well. We're catching a lot of big lanes. Yeah. And I wanted to mention something about lane snapper before we got off that subject. So lane snapper are one of those fish that we're starting to see a lot more of recently. And they're getting a lot bigger. So what's really been worrying me is that the last like five or six council meetings, the Gulf Council, mm -hmm. the federal fishery management body here in the Gulf of Mexico, they've been talking about closing Lane Snapper because the ACL was being reached. But they just did a recent uh, eye target assessment and they went through and looked at the headboat data and used that headboat data to update their catch abundances. Mm -hmm. And it showed the lane snapper abundance has like tripled. It's ridiculous. It's tripled. I think it's I think it's got something to do with that the lack of those groupers that you know the the the, the red groupers that was what we've talked about in the past just up to three years ago they, yeah. they've been almost nil too. I mean we've been just yeah. getting a few here and there. And those but, uh, juvenile lanes like <coughs> we catch a lot of those bigger lanes like those keeper size lanes starting in around 60, 70, 80 foot of water yeah. generally, and then we catch them all the way up to about one twenty one. 30 140 at most but those juvenile lanes those little itty bitty guys right. you find those in 20 30 40 feet of You've, water oh yeah. where we we're putting our pinfish traps we a yeah. lot of times pull up say, those yeah. juvenile lanes yep. and those juvenile lanes intermixed with where we used to catch a lot of red grouper now yep. that area in 40 50 60 yeah. feet of water where we used to catch a bunch of red grouper where those juvenile lanes had to swim through that area to get out to that deeper water uh, to get bigger, those red grouper haven't really been there yeah. in big numbers. So I think that's really changing the lane snapper yeah. game. And what was really interesting is that the data walk workshop for that assessment, they were talking about lane snapper and how they could only grow to a be about 20, 22 inches. Yeah, that's and I was like, dude, we're catching them 24, 26 inches sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, that, that one right yeah. there is easily 22 inches. That's a monster yeah. one. Look at the mouth on that it was, guy. It was, a, it was a big one, yeah. That's a sure. four-out hook. Yeah. Makes that mouth look itty-bitty. Yeah. Or makes that hook look itty-bitty in that big old mouth. So definitely uh, getting to be bigger lanes and more of them. So good news. Long story short, they were yeah. talking about closing them. Now they're not. Oh, that's Now good. they're crazy that's abundant. Oh, yeah. thank God. Because <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, take that's, it, take that's it a, out. a lot of our bycatch of... Yeah. Uh, of an all-day trip is the lane snappers and vermilions. And, you know, if you take those away from us, that, that like, really deadens uh, yeah. the depth that we can fish in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to go out to, you know, uh, 80, 90 feet if I, I can't keep those because, you yeah. know, it'll be, a, it'll be a slow, it'll be a slow day. Not Let's much in the it. box. Yeah, yeah. So those lane snapper, we've been catching a ton of them, and we're going to continue catching a ton of them, thankfully. All right, so let's talk about offshore. Let's get into that 39-hour trip, what you guys want to talk about. A lot of people were asking how our 39-hour trip did. The last couple trips, we haven't really been piling up the fish. I've been busy. We had a trip where it was a little rough. We had trips where we yeah, had only a few people. Uh, but today, we got a nice video of all the stringers laid out in the dock. But we're still going to show you what we caught they did real well out there. Will said it was one of the best trips to be fishing on in a real long time. Is that right? Yeah, the mangrove snapper bite just wouldn't quit. I mean, Frank, the stringers on the dock this morning were impressive. Even the first time newbie angler fishermen on the boat Let's had see six, eight, ten mangroves and two big That's keeper awesome. gags. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was Let's an impressive it. catch. You got these things? Or yeah, what? we, we got right. some photos. We don't got a ton of the yeah, photos, right. unfortunately, okay. but we got some nice photos. So definitely a lot of big mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper bite going very, very well. There's Will holding up three of them that Mike had just caught in a row. So definitely a good bite of fish when you get mangroves back to back to back yeah. like that. 
And there's one of the nicer gags and the big mangrove snapper from the jackpot. Nice. That's a nice mango for sure. And there, the sad part is one of the newer guys who had been on the boat or who had only been on the boat one time before didn't enter the jackpot because he didn't think he had a chance mm-hmm. against everybody else who goes a lot. So he didn't enter. Ended up catching the biggest gag. Is that so right? that was not the biggest gag on the boat. But, that happens uh, all the time. Yeah. You got to be in it to win yeah, it. It's a- <laughs> Just like the name generator. Yeah. <laughs> So definitely some big, big, pretty gag grouper, uh, plus some nice blackfin tuna. Okay. Yeah, they caught one blackfin tuna trolling one of those Nomad DTX minnows, those new trolling lures that everybody's talking about. But this tuna was just caught dropping a bottom. They were on a spot catching a bunch of mangroves. Those mangrove snapper were feeding well. They got a big chum natural chum slick going because mm-hmm. they were catching so many of those snapper fishing on a spot for 45 minutes to an hour or more and that's when those big tuna start showing up and he was just dropping a bait to bottom and this thing sucked it down started running that's That's, always a nice bonus for sure yeah that's a nice tuna to catch on the way to bottom not really trying hard so there's a little red grouper there was there was a pretty good amount of red grouper caught too so not only a great mangrove snapper trip an awesome gag trip, but then the red grouper really cooperated nice. pretty well, too. So, a lot of nice gags. There's that tuna that was caught trolling. Steve was using that new DTX Nomad lure, Nomad design lure. <laughs> that's Bill a Stringer. funky looking... Uh, yeah. yeah, he's got it kind of contorted, but yeah. that's a fat red grouper there. Yeah. And uh, another nice mangrove snapper. I love those fish, man. Those mangrove snapper, they're good eating fish yeah, well, i named my dog after him so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is another nice gag red grouper another nice gag grouper big old mango yeah, that's snapper. a nice mango that's a hog dog yeah big old gag we actually have a lot more photos than i thought we yeah had. cool uh, now we're starting to repeat <laughs> nice gag grouper Oh, yeah. There's a big old gag. Yeah. You can see the leader that's hanging out of that fish's mouth. That was not the leader he caught it on. Is that right? Yeah. You can see the phrase on it. Cool. He had, uh, he had a leader hanging out of his mouth when he reeled it up. So, definitely a nice fish. You can see the scrapes on him getting pulled out of the rocks, too. Definitely a nice catch. And uh, the fish, they cooperated well. It was a good trip. That's awesome. So another nice one for the books. If you guys didn't see the live video this morning, uh, we did a little live video this morning on the dock talking to Will. Uh, That's on our YouTube and our Facebook page. So uh, later on, if you're interested in hearing more about that 39 hour, definitely check out that live video that we filmed this morning on the dock. Uh, So that way... You can hear even more about that great trip that they had. But I think it's time to give away a free trip. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do let's it. Let's keep these guys and gals that's on their right. toes. That's right. So we're going to give away who our... Want, who wants it bad? Bad. Who wants it bad? <laughs> we're going to give away that five-hour half-day first. That's a five-hour half-day for two <clears throat> people. That's a $110 value. Absolutely free. Remember, if you are chosen as that lucky winner, you do have to come, you do have to message us your home address so we can send you out that gift certificate within about 10 minutes. And this is a good time to announce it. We've got some cool new toys here at Hubbard's Marina. You could text us now. So our main office number, that 727 727- three nine three one nine four seven number that you used to call us on all the time now you can text it what? yeah yeah so if you win your if your name is announced here as the lucky winner you can text our main office number seven two seven three nine three one nine four seven your home address within about five to ten minutes and we'll make sure we mail it out to you. So That's cool. Yeah, so if you don't want to leave the stream to message us on Facebook, you can message you can text us, you can do whatever you want. Send us smoke signals, emails, <laughs> whatever. We'll get it. It's pretty cool. So let's see who won that free trip. Free half day fishing trip Here for two go. to go catch some possible hogfish, maybe some mackerel, kingfish. And uh, lots of those gray snappers. Big Daddy is in Pennsylvania, PA. David Gillum, 
lucky winner of that five-hour half David. day. Congratulations is right. Ugh, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. He's all the way in Philadelphia, though. Philadelphia. Bring us a Philly cheesesteak when you come on down. Man, that was one of my favorite trips as a family growing up. Uh, look, I'm writing down Philly cheesesteak. I could. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to write down his name, thinking about Philly cheesesteaks. There's going to be some people from Philadelphia that hate me for saying this, but I have been to Philadelphia quite a few times, and I have never found a good cheesesteak there. I've been, <laughs> I've been to that Pat and Oh, my Gino's. gosh. I can't even believe that those – those. how do they stay in business? The oh ter- Pat gosh. and Gino's? Dude, it's t- they're you not are throwing good at low all. blows they're right now. Not, they're not good. I thought it was awesome. Pat and Gino's? I don't know I, about I don't I was young when I, I went three, there, but all I remember is I wish I lived here cuz I would eat here oh a lot man. more. I took 3 or 4 people there and they, we were all like these are like the t- the top the, the three worst cheesesteaks we've all had. And <laughs> we went to we went to Pat Gino's and this one other one that everyone talks about. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we were like what, why did we just drive an hour to come here cuz we were in New Jersey. Oh and I was like goodness. I've got to go to Pat and Gino's so I watched it on, you know, the food Shows, food network. Yeah, Food Network or whatever. Believe it or not, I watch Food Network. I totally believe that. Then <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, this isn't really, you know. <laughs> Let's see how many enemies you just uh, made. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's going to get shot. <laughs> oh, that's Trent. He's, he's Yeah, see. Someone... We all know about Trent. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I feel uncomfortable sitting next to you after that comment. Man, that's Pat and Gino's, that's like a that's like a I know, but household name. I know. I that's why I was so I was like, what what is going on here? And I was I was asking people, so I said, somebody just take me to a place that has a good cheesesteak. They're like, Oh, you gotta go here. So I go there and it was like You know has a good cheesesteak in our area is Boardwalk Grill. Boardwalk Grill. We gotta mm-hmm. give them a shout out and they're are they yeah. even one of our sponsors? They need to be. Because what, what I'm about to say is gonna change no. We don't have sponsors. Yeah, exactly. The Boardwalk Grill on on uh yeah, on, on John's Pass Boardwalk. Amazing cheesesteaks. Yeah, they're for, yeah. They're awesome. Boardwalk Grill has amazing food, period. Yeah. I love their nachos, their salads, their fried, or their lobster I, rolls. I think we could do this this program on the Food Network. Yeah. Because we could talk about food. We, we've talked about food a lot tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should get back to the get back to the fishing before, yeah. I, before I get shot. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, I did talk a little bit about it, but I want to show you guys. So not only can you... Uh, our little, I'm going to have to just show screen. So not only did we mention about the uh, being able to text our main office, but now on our website, you can see there, hi there, have a question, text us here. You can enter this little box. You can enter your name, your cell phone number, and your message, and you can text me through our website now as well. And that little box will follow you anywhere you go on the website. You can always type, uh, click it. So if you're looking at the weather links for your next fishing trip and you're like, hey, I don't really understand this, just kick that little blue button and send me a message. goes right to my cell phone and it also goes to all the office computers. So either myself or one of our team members will be able to answer your questions. So it's a really cool tool for you to stay in touch with us even more and even better. And it helps me make sure that I stay in touch with you guys because it consolidates all my messages. Yeah, that's totally awesome. I don't have to go to five different Facebook pages, Instagram, Yelp, Google Business, and uh, Facebook every day. It all goes in one one account, one easy to read inbox. So nice. uh, obviously, right now I'm not answering messages because we're doing a live show. But as soon as this show is done, that's where I'm going to answer messages. So pretty cool little uh, feature we added, and. What else is new? We're launching a new website. Josh has been working on it for three months. I don't know anything about this, guys. Yeah, brand new website coming soon. So watch out for that. Uh, Our uh, our 2020 uh, fishing trips calendar, all those specialty fishing trips, those 12, 39, 44-hour trips are going to be launching the first week of December. So that new website's going to be coming out here around mid-November, and uh, we'll need you guys to help us look at it, check it out, give us some 
uh, constructive feedback. And uh, then we're going to be launching that 2020 calendar on that new site, making it even easier to navigate and uh, book reservations. So, awesome. Pretty cool. But <laughs> let's get back to what I was talking about, and that would be the weather. No, I thought it was sandwiches. Uh, someone <laughs> someone said in the comments he has no taste buds. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, Come on. exactly. I didn't get the. I, didn't, I, I, didn't I feel get this the same big. way as I they didn't, do. I didn't get this big from not having taste buds. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but Pat and Gino's, you can't talk smack yeah. about it. It's it's good. Uh, okay. I, uh, I loved it. Okay, I'll well, take Easter. Egg. I mean, I like I like cheese sticks. All yeah. cheese sticks. Never met a cheese stick I didn't like. <laughs> So we, uh, we went to our website, hubbardsmarina.com. We clicked fish and trips. And then under the fish and trips tab, we clicked weather links. And under the weather links, you can find the wind finder forecast or the NOAA forecast. I prefer the wind finder forecast because it's a lot more um, hour by hour. Uh, and it makes it a little easier to read. So I'm going to click that five and ten hour forecast, and then I'm going to click each one of these others. So we're going to look at all of them. This is what we use, guys, when we're like trying to debate whether. Uh, we, this is we, what Frank and I argue over we, we, almost yeah, every morning. We, no, we, we've got a lot better about it. <laughs> most <but>. mornings. <laughs> yeah, but we, you know when when we're trying to decide what is going to happen for the day, how far out we're going to go out fishing. Uh, you know, things like that, you know, and, and, or if a trip's going to have to be canceled, you know, mm -hmm. if the weather's just going to be that bad, you know, because we don't want, A, to get anybody hurt, that number one, you know, and we do want everyone to have a good experience at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, when, you know, everyone spends their good hard-earned money to come out fishing with us, we try to give them the best day possible, Yeah. And, and we want them to have a good day, you know, we don't ever control the fishing, but we're pretty good at, at you know, at making it happen. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and uh, what we try to do as well, especially with some of the new technology we have with being able to text you and email you guys is like, for example, the last couple of days, the weather has not been so great. Yeah. So every night I email the trip, the clients that are going fishing the next day, email them a nice, long, big old email saying, hey, this is what you can expect tomorrow on your trip. And then the next morning when they arrive, they've got the weather report on the calendar. Right. And then in the pre-boarding seminar, we talk to you again about the weather. So just as a little side note, if you ever have a trip booked with us and I email you telling you, hey, the weather's not going to be good. And then I have the weather report on the counter when you come to check in. It's probably a good idea to transfer. Yeah, we're not <laughs> it's probably a good idea the, to go another day. There's no no business out there is ever going to do something like that. I mean, you're like, we're we're get, we're we like, straight hey, up tell you today is not a good day to go. Today is not the day to go. <laughs> And, and, you know, even if it's that morning, you know, you can't be upset, you know, if this has ever happened to you, you've been out there and you sh even showed up, we check in and then, you know, the weather does turn really bad, really quickly. It's very rare that very, very rare that we ever cancel a trip that morning. Uh, we try to do it the night before because obviously best. we have people driving and whatnot, but when, it, when it does happen, you can't be upset with us. It's we're, we're absolutely making the call. So you have a good day. Mm -hmm. We are not in this. To, can we go out in six, seven, eight footers? The boat can go out in six, seven, eight footers and be 100% fine. Would I want to? No. There are some people out there that just don't care, though. Yeah. And, but the, 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 the problem is, is it's just it's just not sensible. <laughs> you know, people, somebody's going to get hurt. If you did that every day, somebody's eventually going to you know, get, yeah. get really hurt. If not, you know, I mean, man, we've had people, you know, you know really hurt themselves on the boat. Just be, you know, just by making a mistake of not holding onto that handrail, and you get that one rogue wave that hits you, you know, wrong, and then next thing you know, you're flying into a table or something, you know, or into the railing, and mm -hmm. you know, we don't want that to happen. We want everyone to come out there, spend their good, hard-earned money, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day, say, man, that was, that was a great a trip. Time. We had a good time, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, getting a couple guys together, and then the, all of a sudden at the last minute we cancel. It's not because we don't want to go take you out and have a good time. It's just, you know, it, it is yeah. what it is. And, you know, you got to understand that. And most people do. But there's a few yeah. that that, uh, Who knows? that don't get it. <laughs> but we do try our best to communicate with you really openly. And I always say we guarantee an excellent client experience with superior guest service. That's right. But we don't control the weather and we can't make fish bite. That's right. So here's what to expect on your trip. Right. And then I'm really brutally honest. <clears throat> and it's not to scare right. you off the trip. It's kind of like what Frank said. I want you to go out there and have a good time. 
But when I know that it's going to be uncomfortable and I know the fishing's going to be bad, I'm going to let you know. And then at that point, if you decide, hey, I still want to go out there and try this thing out, then yeah. that's on, that's your decision. Yeah, we, we pull from multiple resources. <laughs> we still got to feed our families. Right. We, we, we pull from multiple different resources to figure out what, what's going to happen with the weather. And we go, even go as far as walking out onto the jetty some mornings. Yeah. You know, we go out there and say, let's, you know, let's. Let's just kind of take a look out there because there are fish, you know, sometimes yeah. that, you know, in three or four miles that you can go catch. I've got some spots that are just two two miles off the beach that hold big dad grouper. But yeah. if, if you can't get to them or you can't, you know, provide that good, you know, experience. Uh, well, this is what Dylan's going over basically is how yeah, to look now at we're going to show you. He's going to show, show you how to we do look it. At. You're going to show we're going to show you real quickly what to look for. And when you're going out on your next trip let you know how you can look at the weather so again i went to our website hubbardsmarina.com went to fishing trips clicked weather links on the weather links page i opened up these wind finder forecasts these wind finder forecasts take you to these page the egmont channel entrance is that very first one for the five and ten hour trip and you can see here on the top is just a very visual graph that dark blue is good that light green is not so good, and the yellow and red is hurricane. <laughs> so, <Right>. real <laughs> quick visual symbol, you can see here November 5th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday are the better days this week, and you'll see that in these graphs below. You can see tomorrow it's going to be a little windy in the morning, it's going to calm down, it's a little bumpy, but it's not too bad. It's out of the east. You got to look at that. It's out of that. the east. Yeah, that's a high we look at is, uh, we're, uh, we're gonna get there oh, okay. too right. but yeah the east east is a good sign high pressure that pressure's changing you can see the wind shift here that was out of the north with that cold front it's gonna shift out of the uh east tonight sometime it probably is already blowing out of the east now and that wind shift is gonna bring a pressure change that pressure change is definitely going to make those fish chew again so <laughs> definite tomorrow afternoon is going to be a good time and then tuesday look at that that weather tuesday oh, almost man. no our, wind it's our all day trip right yeah almost no wind seas at one foot it is going to be absolutely gorgeous and don't let that uh rain there scare you at all that is 0 0.08 inches so that's like a super low chance of rain yeah. And what happens when it rains? The, well, the I, fish hide under the boat so they don't get wet. <laughs> right. Well, I, I what I do is I use the, I'll use the radar and I try to keep everyone dry all day. Mm -hmm. If I see a band coming through and we just gotta, we'll usually either just sit through it or we'll punch right through it. If we're already going and you know I'm coming up on a spot and that band's coming through, I just punch right through it. You know, and we'll get to the other side. I'll fish something a mile or two on the other side of it, but. You know, I'm looking at that radar all day to make sure that I, I try to keep everyone dry. And on the way in, I look for the rain because I try to rinse the boat off a little bit. <laughs> but other than that, uh, you know, we, we try to keep you dry all day long. And it's 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 very seldom that I can't do anything about it. Two trips a year or something, maybe. Yeah. You know. So the boats have radar. We try our best to avoid it. Real low chance Tuesday. Tuesday is definitely, in my opinion, the best day to go. Wednesday, the weather is still real nice, but it does pick up a little bit. That east breeze, another little high pressure ridge starts moving into the area. Gets a little bit, not I wouldn't even say that's bumpy, but there's some more motion to the boat Wednesday. Then Thursday, uh, same thing, a little bit breezy, and then a little bit more bumpy than Tuesday. And then Friday, sometime late night, this has already changed since last time I looked at it. One big thing that you want to take away from this, if you're sitting there freaking out that, oh, crap, I have a trip booked this weekend, the weather looks bad. <laughs> well, that is that is five days, six days away. That weather has changed 90% for Friday's forecast since I looked at it three, four hours ago. That's how much it changes this time of year that many days out. So only really put salt behind the forecast two to three days out and even then two to three days out you really can't yeah. trust it we never canceled till the night really the night before well Very for, seldom. for short trips yes yeah. for longer range trips oh, yeah. if you got a 39 hour trip booked we're going to cancel typically two days out yeah. if we know the weather's going to be bad but if it was up to me right. i would like to wait till the very last minute for everything yeah. but unfortunately the longer the trip the more time we have to give because the right. further people are traveling that's right um, but the shorter trips like the half day yeah night before 
10 hour trip night before is definitely what we're looking at. But that is what you kind of want to look for when you're on our website. But another big trick on the website on the weather links page is if you scroll down there towards the bottom, this is my favorite website probably on the internet. <laughs> this is Mike's weather page, uh, spaghettimodels.com. This guy's out of Tampa. Mm, he is, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go again. Down another I'm rabbit kidding, trail. I'm go ahead. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Mike's weather page. This guy's out of Tampa. He's a really cool dude. Super smart. This is primarily used for storm tracking, but he has a lot of cool tools on here. And the tools I mainly use are right here. And uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see these. These are the tools that I look at every day along with WindFinder. These are called prog charts. And he has them nice and easy to read. So I'll open these three right in a row. And it's basically, this is what was going on today. You can see that occluded front moving through. This is tomorrow, that occluded front's moving out. Little rain is building in behind it. And then this is the next day. You can see that high pressure coming down, that high pressure starting to build in. And that ridge is what's going to push that east breeze. And then you can open this one. This gives you the next, that's four days. This is four days, five days, six days, seven days, eight days out. And you can see what this, this, blue line right here that is a low pressure system uh, zoomed in too much this blue line right here is that low pressure system and that's what they were forecasting there for friday what's making that friday weather but again this is really far in advance so still could change drastically uh, but that's what we're kind of looking for and that's what we look at those prog charts really help us dial in on hey why is the weather doing this why is this wind shifting from out of the north to the east? Those prog charts really help with that. If you want to get really deep into the weather, uh, that's a great page to do it. And he does a lot of live videos like we're doing now to talk about the weather too. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but I think it's time to give away another fishing yeah, trip. Yeah, it's time. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. I lost my page. There it is. All right. So let's give another way another fishing trip we're going to give away a 10 hour all day trip this ten time hour. 10 hour all day you might get to go fishing with captain frank and tell him about how bad taste he has in philly cheesesteaks <laughs> <laughs> let's see who won a 10 hour all day trip drum roll you're good That's at that all I got. Yeah. <laughs> mike mckenna from sarasota mike mckenna congratulations Remember, if you are chosen as that lucky winner, you do have to text our main office number, 727-393-1947. Message us on Facebook. Shoot me an email to info at Hubbard's Marina. Whatever you want to do, you just have to reach out to us within about 10, 15 minutes because we are all about uh, keeping it fair and making sure those watching live get the chance uh, to win because uh, that's, right. that's what that's what we want it's uh if you're not watching live you don't have a shot to win i love some of these comments <laughs> the comments are awesome what are we missing here it's fun let's uh, read some of these somebody comments. said something about uh what's that jersey mike's awesome cheesesteaks dude jersey mike's i, I we had jersey mike's for dinner tonight did you don't awesome. get me started on jersey and they mike's got the, we don't they have got enough the, show the left pepper relish and without, oh cherry with, pepper with, relish with, dog without, without that you Woo! don't have a cheesesteak no, you yeah, got nothing. I agree. You got nothing. You got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Cherry pepper relish or die. Yeah, or die. Or kill you. <laughs> People are gonna shoot me. <laughs> Trent Simmons. Oh I man, see <laughs> that is awesome. All right, let's answer some YouTube comments here. Uh, can you talk about uh, Dan the Fishman says? Can you talk about Hubbard's record fish or any epic catches over the years? Also trolling on the 10 hour. Uh, typically on the 10 hour, what I tell people is most of the time on the 10 hour, we don't troll. Our five hour trips, our 39 hour, our 44 hour, you can always troll on those trips. Our 10 and 12 hour trips, typically the boat is moving a little too yeah. fast. To we troll. do we do have some guys that do it. They use, uh, you know, you can use. You can use that bullet head skirted plug, That's, right? There you go. All right. A bullet head. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, that, that's right. That's what I was gonna say. Mm. You know, uh, I mean, you actually were. But if you actually hook a fish going that fast with yeah. one of those jigs, 
You gotta have we some gotta special yeah, well, tackle. Yeah, what we what would I usually do is I'll have uh, one of the mates uh, just tap on the rail, and I can hear it up in the wheelhouse. Yeah, and then I'll I'll slow it down, but it's gotta be like a king or something. If yeah. it's a Spanish mackerel skipping on the surface, you're on your own. Yeah, uh, it's got to be a big fish, right? It's got to be a good a good sized fish uh, for us to stop the boat mm-hmm. uh, because you know we got a lot of people that are trying to get out there fishing and. You know, one guy slowing the boat down. You know, I, I do make up the time. If we stop for a minute, two times, what's that? Two minutes. I mean, we're, we're late at every day anyhow. We always give extra time. So, what? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't say anything. Yeah, because a year, a year or two ago, I was never late. But I just, uh, you know, things have changed. I've refocused in life, and you know, I just <laughs> don't want to come back in. <laughs> uh. All right, let's see what other qu- comments we have here on YouTube. Uh, so a couple people on YouTube were asking about how to win those free trips. Again, as we state in the beginning of every show, you do have to be commenting on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page at least once. You can watch it on YouTube, but you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video at least one time. And that is only because YouTube does not communicate with their API to any third-party random comment generators and for those of you who don't understand what i said because i don't understand what i said it just basically means is youtube is really really lame i can't, <laughs> I can't believe you're going over this again yeah well i just want to make <laughs> oh, sure oh these are people these are from comments. youtube yeah these are comments. oh, oh. Yeah, i just want to make sure everybody knows yeah i did the best i could yeah. so you do have to comment on the hubbard's marina facebook page in order to be eligible to win we still got a free 39 hour trip to give away you, you still got time to go throw a comment in to get your name in the pot how many people we got right now we are where up are we to where are we uh, what is 60 320 60? something yeah 320 okay yes sir all right let's see here what other questions no idea what that says uh if you see some holler okay, okay. Uh, hmm. Hmm. do you need a boat to fish the pass no, you don't need a boat to no. fish the pass. You can you can fish the pass from the sea walls. You can fish from our dock. You can come from our, you can fish from our dock. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, uh, our dock has got uh, you know killer we, fishing. You got to remember though, we don't want any hooks and any birds. You know, and we know sometimes the accidents happen, but please, you know, do the proper thing and do not cut any line off any of the birds. We see that a lot in. Not necessarily on our dock. As soon as we see something like that, mm-hmm. we grab a we You're grab gone. a hold of the situation and we are right on it. But mm-hmm. um, um, don't and don't get the hooks in our lines, guys. If you do, you got to let somebody know. You know, because yes, you get a hook in a line, you got to take it out or let a crew member know so we can cut it out because we don't want any hooks in our captain or crew uh, hands. That's right. But big big thing I always tell people is. Our dock is always open. You're more than welcome to fish from it. As long as we're not actively loading or unloading, as long as we're actually open, the office has to be open. The gate has to be unlocked. The gate is closed. There's a reason for it. Yeah. Don't climb onto the dock at night. You will you, have some issues. <laughs> you will have issues with the sheriff department <laughs> yes. if you're on our docks when the gate is locked. Yes. Yeah, so as long as the gate's open, we're open. We're not actively loading and unloading, and you're out there being a respectful normal angler not trying to hook pelicans or do anything crazy you're more than welcome to fish from the dock but you can fish from the beach behind our office you can fish from either jetty you can fish from the bridge there's a lot of areas you can fish absolutely free around john's pass without a boat for sure you can catch you know keeper mangrove snappers right now they only got to be 10 inches Mm -hmm. um inshore they only have to be 10 inches of course uh we've caught keeper uh gag groupers from our docks not very often but they do show up. And most There's, most the, of the gag the kids groupers. that were fishing today, we had a group of three kids, and they were ages like ten to about fifteen years old. Their parents dropped them off at six thirty a.m. this oh, yeah. morning. They didn't show back up until like four p.m. That's awesome. These kids were that's, on the dock all day. They caught awesome. mangroves. They caught gags. They caught yeah. snook. They caught like a dozen snook. A couple of nice redfish. Yeah. The one kid dropped down a ladyfish like this big and got freaking smoked. Yeah. Smoked. It I've was seen awesome. that happen to those kids. <laughs> yeah. I was I was sitting at my desk and the, the security cameras are above my desk now. Right. And I keep looking up because these kids are sprinting up and down the dock. Yeah. I finally walked outside. I was like, dude, what is going on? It's like I need more bait. I need more bait. <laughs> 
it was it was awesome, man. Yeah, he was having a real good time. Yeah, so. we remember that when you were a kid. Yeah, Golly, those are the good old days. I got photos of it. Yeah, you're like scrounging for change for a dozen shrimp. Yeah, well, I used to catch the bait. I would uh, I would take uh, the squid. I would clean the boat and take the squid off the deck and mm-hmm. cut it up and catch oh, fish. Yeah. And I'd sell them to the guys going on the overnight trips. Don't, don't, don't give people ideas yeah. here now. Well, Come that's on. not legal anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to have an SBL now. But uh, mm-hmm. another question we saw was, uh, would any of our boats take you out to spear fish for hogfish? Unfortunately, we do not have any spear fishing trips. And I know I personally would not want to take someone out to my hogfish hole, spearfish, <laughs> except for me. <laughs> right. That's, that's for sure. Uh, but, but there's a lot of uh, options in the area. The real cool place right down the road is Infinite Descent Dive Shop. There's Jim's Dive Shop. There's Suncoast Water Sports. There's Tackle Shack. There's Bill Jackson's. Those are all great local dive shops that can hook you up. But Infinite Descent Dive Shop is in Madeira Beach on Madeira Way. And they have a dive boat inside John's Pass now. But they don't do dive charters on, or spear fishing charters. They do dive charters. They don't do spear fishing really? charters. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of local dive shops. Call those guys. They'll get you set up for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody had a, uh, I, I what other a good question. Was uh, the Kingfish. Yeah. Have the Kingfish showed up yet? Yeah. More than happy to take that one, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> Smoky? <laughs> Smoky sucks. <laughs> no, so there have been uh, a few kings. We've been getting uh, lots of Spanish mackerel. They're everywhere. We've caught kings, but Smoky hasn't caught one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I've caught one. I don't. I caught one. Smoky hasn't that, caught one. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. So That's how bad it th- is. <laughs> I, I believe they're right around the corner because I uh, just two days ago was seeing uh, s- some of those big inshore the, you know the inshore bay pods that are yeah. well, offshore but maybe two three miles out mm-hmm. where you'll we've been seeing just a pod here a pod there but uh it was the first time i'd seen where there was pod 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 you know yeah. and that's what you know it takes along with the water temperature dropping a little bit and i'm thinking that it's gonna you know yeah it's gonna basically be, right now we're, we're, it's right around the corner it's it's, it's ready yeah. to pop the yeah. water is slowly coming to a boil <clears throat> it's ready to boil over and those kingfish will be foaming we've catch we're catching a lot of big kingfish out deep around yeah, the uh middle grounds around the elbow around those deep water wrecks anywhere from 120 all the way up to about 220 foot of water a lot of kingfish out there, but inshore in the near shore waters, we haven't really seen a big number of kingfish. The kingfish bite's been a little hit and miss. Some days we'll catch them, some days we won't. And Smokey's been really trying, bless his heart, but it just hasn't happened for him. Uh, now, in Smokey's defense and in the defense of our our kingfish populations, because someone was saying the other day, "Oh, the kingfish must be all gone. We need to shut them down." And that's not true. The Somebody water temp yeah. The water temperature hasn't gotten right. That water temperature hasn't gotten right. This year was a really late yeah, winter. We yeah, I mean, normally by this time I would have broken out my uh, work boots, yeah. my steel toes and my yeah. my jeans. I haven't had to yet this year. Yeah. I mean, we just had our first real cold front and it only got into like the mid 70s, but that cold front that we were pointing out, that blue line, right. It's forecasted to have a high of 64 behind it. So that's going to make some kingfish show up. That's going to change our water temperatures. And yeah. that's going to bring those kingfish near shore. And it's going to excite these gags even more. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got a, uh, there's a guy, uh, Sam Longhorns. I, I'm sure you, um, mm-hmm. you can read his right yeah. here. It says, he had a great trip with me on Tuesday. Who says you can't get it done in cowboy boots? <laughs> Smokey gave him a bunch of shit for wearing st- cowboy for boots wearing, on the boat. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I do. We do remember you, and I know you guys had a good time. You guys had a mess of fish for sure, and uh, that was I wear cool. Cowboy and boots it made me smile when I read yours. Uh, you know, uh, it's tough to you know to to handle all you know all the YouTube comments, the Facebook, yeah. and and talk to you at the same time. But uh, yeah. Uh, you saw that yeah, one. I, yeah, eye. I had to. I had to give him a shout out. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wear ca- those those work boots. Uh, my his steel name is toe. Sam J Longhorns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his last awesome. name's Longhorns. He's got to wear cowboy boots. Yeah. Right. You have to. But that's what I was talking about. Those work boots. <coughs> Joe calls them slip-on work boots. 
I was like, bro, those aren't slip-on work boots. Those are cowboy boots. He was like, no, no, you just got to try it. They're work boots. And I went there. They, they lab- they're they labeled as work boots here in the state of Florida. Is that right? And, yeah. And I bought them, and you wear them with jeans <coughs> and uh, pants so Smokey can't make fun of you. That's funny. <laughs> and they're comfortable, man. That's I funny. can't wait to break them back yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's see here some other questions we got going on. Uh, actually, let's check our text. Let's see who's text us. Holy moly, we got a lot of texts. Uh, I'll take a break. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's a good one. I've never fished on your trip before. What exactly do I need to, or what do I need to know as far as rigs? Over the Atlantic side, it's a little different than the Gulf side. And that brings up a great point. Uh, there is such a difference anywhere you fish. And that's yeah. one of the reasons I really enjoy fishing. And one of the reasons I really enjoy party boat fishing specifically is when you get on a party boat, there's so many anglers from so many different areas. And it's really cool to get on a boat. You kind of notice that one guy who might be a little saltier looking. Yeah. Or he might have like the gear that looks special or yeah. something. He's dialed in. And it doesn't yeah. matter where you go. I've been on party boats in the Northeast, on the East Coast, in the West Coast, in Texas. Any party boat you step on, there's always that one guy who... There's always that guy. Who's got it (laughs) dialed in. And he's catching fish. No one else is catching fish. This guy's catching fish. And sometimes people are like, oh, the captain only put him on the fish. Yeah, because that's his buddy. Yeah, Yeah. or... Usually that guy's the biggest a-hole on the boat. (laughs) And we don't like him either. But he keeps coming back. And he... (laughs) <laughs> and they catch fish because they know what they're doing yeah, and they've funny. been doing it a long time. Yeah. So really, really cool way to pick up on fishing is by watching that one guy. And yeah. on our boats, like on the 39-hour trip, that one guy who catches fish when no one else is catching fish yeah. works for us. Yeah. And that's John Martin. He acts as a fishing coach. So yeah. the, he goes out there and he's available. You can approach him. He's going to show you what he's doing to catch fish. And it, it's really, really cool. And that's why I really enjoy what the way our business is and the way our crew and captains are is they're very approachable. I've been on party boats where you, you ask the crew or something that, hey, how do I rig this? Can you help me rig this? Yeah. What do I need to do to catch fish? And they're just really gruff and short. And all you got to do is ask. Like we, 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 pound, we, we tell them, you know, before they get on the boat, when they first get on the boat, I had a guy, the day. I had a guy from the Northeast come out fishing with us and called back later. Hey, I didn't really catch fish. Uh, I, I was fishing this one. I was like, what, what, what were you doing? Did you ask the crew? No, I didn't talk to him at all. I was like, why? He was yeah. like, they were busy. I didn't want to bother him. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this isn't New Jersey, bro. Yeah. You're more than happy Whoa. to talk. Whoa! Have you been on a party boat in New Jersey? <laughs> no, I haven't. Anybody watching is not going to get upset because they know what I'm talking about. I can't. I yeah. can only imagine. You met James yeah. Russo before, the guy oh, from yeah, New yeah, York. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, imagine going fishing on his party yeah. boat and asking hey, him a question. Hey. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot oh, different. That's funny. <laughs> so you can ask questions, and you're not going to oh, yeah, get in trouble awesome. for it. Yeah, and, uh, we we're encourage here to help. it. We encourage it, and we tell you like countless times throughout the course of the day. Ask questions that don't just try to wing it. There's no know? stupid questions. There's only stupid answers. <laughs> and I'll be sure to give you a few of them. <laughs> At least. And I'm, I'm always there uh, to help you out as well while we're boarding, uh, helping people in the office, getting the right tackle, whatever it may be. We're always here to help you guys and get you dialed in, whether it's one of these shows, whether it's our Salt Strong Mastery Courses, don't forget about that. They're buy one, get three free, plus a year membership right now. Absolutely free, too. So don't forget about the Salt Strong Mastery courses. Thanks for reminding me, Frank. <laughs> you can go I to, have no idea what you're talking about. You can go to Google and type in uh, the search bar there, saltstrong.com forward slash Hubbard. And that's going to take you to the secret page. You get all three courses, and you get a free year membership. So it's normally the courses are a hundred bucks a piece. You get all three courses and a free hundred dollar membership uh, for a year to Salt Strong. So it's basically a four hundred dollar value for ninety seven bucks. 
and you get all the cool stuff from <coughs> Salt Strong. That's cool. But also the mastery courses, and these are courses where we're actually out on the boat in person. Captain Anthony, Rich, myself, Captain Garrett Hubbard, Captain Mark Hubbard, my father, we all really, Captain Frank helped too. Everybody helped put these courses together. And Salt Strong took three days of information on the boat and consolidated it into really easy to watch two to three minute videos. So really, really cool courses. And there's 50 two to three yeah, minute videos. It's bad. I bet, that's, bone, I bet that's really good with the. Uh, I filmed the, the it. Mang I was the I mango was, snapper thing because yeah, and the grouper like, course too. Yeah. The grouper course. I I was there. I filmed it. Yeah. I I talked for three days, and I was like, I don't know how they're gonna turn all that stuff into a quick, but easy to read course, I, and they did it. It's, I, a, it's I did, impressive. I, this is the first I've seen of it, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know the man, the mango snapper thing because that's that's something I want to touch on real quick. Uh, yeah. If we got a minute. Um, they're a hard fish to catch. You know, I, I'm not going to, you know. Th- not going to sugarcoat it. Yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. <laughs> when you're fishing in 100 feet of water to feel a mangrove snap because they, they just, they mouth that, you know, that bait. Mm-hmm. And um, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not on your, your game feeling it, you know, you're, you're just not going to get them. You get a few here and there that are, you know, suicidal. But um, <laughs> I'm kind of anxious to see what they, they have to say. if Because, uh, you know. I mean, the, and it was one of my. There is definitely some tricks with catching a mangrove snapper. And there's some people that know how to do it and what you're looking for. And if you don't know what it is, you know, you'll ju- you can go out on a 39-hour trip. I've seen it. Guys catching two or three. Yeah. And I've, I've been out there and caught, you know, 60, 70 of them, you yeah. know. And, um. And it's funny you say that because that's what we were actually talking about this morning on the dock. And that's why I always start my seminars talking about mangrove snapper. Because my fishing seminars at Bass Pro, the next one's November 16th at 2 p.m. Uh, I always start them out because I like talking with people, not at you. So I always like to ask you, hey, what do you want to talk about? Someone raises their hands and we talk about those fish. But a lot of times in the beginning of the seminar, no one wants to raise their hand yet. Yeah. So I always started out talking with about mangrove snapper because in my lifetime, in my experience, mangrove snapper are one of those fish that if you can learn how to catch mangrove snapper consistently and catch them often, yeah. it doesn't matter what type or what fish you're going after, what type of bottom fishing you're doing, you're going to be a hundred times better at it. And the guy who can go out on a 10 hour trip, a 12 hour trip, a 39 hour trip and catch mangrove snapper consistently and catch them often, best angler on the boat. In my opinion, that's, that's, that's pretty much hands down. If you're, if you're the guy that's catching the mangrove snappers, you're the guy that's catching all the other stuff too. Yep. You know, you don't, you don't know, you can't all never guarantee the biggest who catches the biggest fish on the boat. But the most fish that's caught on the boat is the guy that knows how to make fish. Or the girl. Fish. Guy. Shout out, Christina. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guy, gal, whoever you are. Yeah, I mean, it definitely it definitely takes a, a lot of practice and a little bit of skill to get good at mangrove snapper fishing. And some of the courses will really, really help. Going fishing a lot really helps. Having the right tackle really helps. Uh, but I could talk a lot about mangrove snapper and that actually brings me to remind you guys on our website, if you go to fishing trips under the fishing trips page is the fishing tips and tricks page. If you go to the fishing tips and tricks page, we got a bunch of free tips here. Now these are all free tips. So they're just me standing on the dock or me sitting in my office or me talking over one of these videos to you. Uh, they're a lot different from these courses where the courses were actually out in the boat catching fish. I'm catching fish and showing you how to do it on the boat. So a little different, but they are free. And uh, down towards the bottom is my mangrove snapper secrets. This is like a 30 minute really, oh, oh, it's only 12 minutes. Yeah, that's a, that's a fisherman right just, there. Just, Rounded up just a the lot. Tip. Just the tip. <laughs> Uh, it's a 13 minute video uh, from back in the day when we used to do these live shows with my phone. So not the best video quality, but some really good mangrove snapper. Well, tips you at in least there. looked better then. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't so fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was before I was <laughs> Jersey Mike's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and all those yummy Philly the pasta bazoolies. <laughs> uh, that's what having a kid will do to you. Uh, a kid and uh, a lot of other kids 
at work. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, we got to wrap it up here. Last week, I ran like 30 minutes late, and uh, some people were kind of disappointed in that. <laughs> So we're going to have to wrap this up. I know I missed a bunch of questions. So just like last weekend, I'm going to be uh, going through all those comments. So if I missed your comment, you're always uh, welcome to comment again. But long story short, I'm going to go through the comments and type your answers. So if I didn't answer your question live on the video, I'll go back through and type the answers to the comments. And uh, Frank is going to go home, so he won't be around, but I'll tag him if you have a question for him. And then don't forget as well, you can always go on our website, and on the website, on that bottom, got to take away the video again, on the bottom right corner of the website, you can click that little green box. Click that little green box, it'll turn blue. You can send me a text message there, or you can go to your cell phone and text me at 727-393-1947 and I'll be happy to answer your questions via text as well but I think it's time to give away a free 39 hour that's, trip that's what everyone's going yeah. on uh, they don't want to hear our garbage <laughs> yep so we talked about the Salt Strong special deal I put that link in the comments buy three mas or buy one mastery course get two more free and you get an hour, or uh, excuse me, a whole year of uh, the membership in Salt Strong's Insider Club uh, included as well. Uh, I mentioned it, but I want to mention it again. November 16th, 2 p.m. is the next Bass Pro Shop Seminar. We give away free trips at those Bass Pro Shop Seminars. And after the seminar is done, I stay there for an hour or two or three and answer all the questions that you guys have. And I even show some people who hang out around the aisles as well if you have questions about reels hooks lures whatever great time to come see me at bass pro shops november 16th 2 p.m and frank will be there too who knows you know what <laughs> i might show up uh i know uh baby jack will be there that's going to be our special guest that day november 16th at 2 p.m so definitely that's worth going right there He's a cute little. He is. I, uh, I we, just. Uh, we, I forgot. That's, I that's the only reason I'm here to do the show, is so I can say hello to him before, <laughs> before the show. There he is. There he is. Sporting his Bass Pro Shops outfit. Yep. The good people at Bass Pro already sent him a gift bag. Mm -hmm. He's a gangster. Is it, you guys have the same chin. <laughs> he's got. He's already got one of these shirts. Does he? Yeah. He's got one of these shirts, and I'm gonna get it embroidered for him. Nice. Yep. Make it a onesie. Yep. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be cool. You know, you know man, they, they'd eat that out. You'd sell out, sell out the real legends or something. Yeah, there. you're welcome. At Bell's. Columbia. <laughs> yeah, right. PFG onesies. Yeah. <laughs> we could do it. We could do That'd hey, be awesome. Shh, we got to stop talking about this. Yeah, we just had a we million, might, dollar, million idea. dollar idea. We got to finish this show. Next thing you know, I'll have my own boat and shh. <laughs> All right, let's see who won a 39-hour right. fishing trip. This is what they're all, you guys are waiting for. I know a lot of you guys are li li listening, but let's... I think most of them just want the free trips. Yeah. That, we right. should do a poll one of these trips. I know Facebook just came out with a new API where I can run a poll. So we'll have to run a poll one of these days and uh, ask, find out how many of what? you guys are watching because you actually enjoy the content of the show. Or you just here for the free trip? I feel like it's nice to have the power that we've got 330, 40 people. And we can just keep 340 talking. people that we can keep talking right now, knowing what you guys are here for. And we gotcha. Gotcha. Well, we're not going to do that, no, though. No. Here we go. We're going to think about right. it. 39-hour <laughs> fishing trip. The winner is Andy Pollins. Nice. He said, "Nice." That's that was his. Comment. That was the, the winner. one comment he needed. The one comment. He put that comment in there. Nice, Andy Pollins. Where's he from? Did, it, doesn't oh, it doesn't it say. It just it okay. just shows the comments. So. Okay, Andy well, Pollins. Nice. Congratulations. Yep. And uh, don't forget, guys, you can shoot <coughs> us a text at three nine three one nine four seven. You can call us at that number. Uh, come out, join us November sixteenth at Bass Pro Shops at two p.m. Don't forget about our Fox 13 live shows every Friday morning, 8.15.
I'll see you next Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. Uh, for another live stream show. Next time you see this guy, he's going to have his daughter with him. Yep. Uh, Miss 11-year-old Kylie will be happy to show you guys uh, the ropes on one of those all-day trips. She's a little uh, bad-to-the-bone little fisher girl. I'll have her make a... Uh show you guys how to do double you know hooks. we should do a we should do a to-do video a how-to video of kylie that'd be cool that'd be yeah. dope that'd be dope yeah all right so we're we're gonna do that we're gonna get a how-to video filmed here for our youtube page courtesy of kylie we'll throw it on the fishing tips page awesome that'll be pretty cool but uh tune in next week uh remember if you're too busy to go fishing you're just too doggone busy there it is have a good night guys thanks for watching